Mongoose Jake here now to finally go over the Tetra Shot internals. And following immediately up with this video, I'm going to show the mod guide of how to turn this into a actual shotgun blaster. So let's keep it as it is in stock form for now. And I've already removed the pump grip and the, uh, we'll call it the chain hatch or belt hatch that goes on top. Again, there is no solvent welding on this to get inside of it and all of the screws are again the same size so don't worry about your placement just take apart your your grip and you do have to uh, remove this to actually split the shell so you do have to remove this hatch I uh, took it off first then the grip and then you can simply pull it apart Then you can simply pull it apart. Now, a lot of these parts here are removable. So what you see is the top pink part, this purple piece, and the green grip piece. They're all removable. So paint jobs can be done in a huge variety of ways. Now let's get into the actual internals here. I've had this apart multiple times. I've already made some parts cut, uh, for the shotgun mod. So I'm gonna go over how this actually works and how it does both rotate the plunger tube, because this is a rotating plunger tube design, and how it advances the belt. Now, looking at this, you have a very simple design here. In this whole priming rod goes through the inside of the belt advancement mechanism and comes around to the back. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove the spring so that we can see how this actually functions without me having to fight the spring. This is a little spring rest and you do have to pivot it around to here. This is the only way it comes off. Pull this off, set it aside. Pull the plunger rod out. There's a decent amount of dead space in there that could be filled in with hot glue and that's what's going to have to happen. Now, the one thing I've noticed is even the stock spring is a little bit of a tight fit to get off. Now, here's the good part. Stock spring, again, the same turf retaliator spring that I used. This is a retaliator size spring. It is a little shorter, so a retaliator, an actual retaliator spring will have a little bit of pre-compression, but should work. Even if you have to cut a, a uh, coil off or so. So it should work, retaliator size, same diameter, and everything. You'll be able to, you will be able to get a retaliator spring to work on that plunger rod. So good news. It's um, comparing it to a typical Busby MagFed. Again, Busby MagFed, a little bit longer, but nearly identical diameter. So again, good, good selection of springs that you can use for this blaster. Now, with that removed, and I'm even going to leave the plunger rod out for this demonstration. Here is your air restrictors. And that is four air restrictors that are in through a, a groove here. The air has to pass in through. As the plunger tube turns, it lines up and coincides with the ports to fire off, you know, in this case, bottom first, and then it goes around. And it has this little notch here to help prevent, I guess, it from indexing too far one way or the other. But when you do the shotgun mod, you won't have to worry about that. So let's get this back in place and ready for me to demonstrate the internal mechanism. Now with that out of the way, the plunger rod itself doesn't need to be in place for you to see this. The the priming bar pushes back. As you can see, here is a here is a small spring-loaded notch that catches and rotates the plunger tube. Now, if the shell half was on, it would rotate. That's for one shot. Now, when this comes forward, nothing happens. That's because we're not to the proper notch yet. Now, fire again. Rotates, nothing happens. Go through all four shots until finally this ramp is facing downward. Now, when that ramp faces downward, now keep your eyes on this spring-loaded rotational mechanism. 
Now, it pushes down and catches the belt advancement mechanism. And now, this mechanism turns the belt. So there's your key for shotgun mods. You have to get this. See, that, that as of now only rotates after four shots. Because that's when this ramp, this distance between this ramp to this ramp is the amount of rotation required for four shots to occur. To shotgun mod this, you have to forget about using the ramps. And instead, you must keep this, which this is spring loaded, you must keep this down. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this up first, as this is my personal creation. And if somebody rips this off, you already know where they got it. I have already machined metal pieces with screw anchor points to replace that part. So that internally, you know, if you don't want if you don't want a shotgun mod it, don't do anything to any internal components. There are no locks, there are no issues. It's very simple. And the only thing I can think of as a lock possibly would be this little piece right here. I have not deemed it to be necessary for firing. I think it's the only thing, because it is a lock of sorts. It, prefer, it prevents the trigger from pulling back, so you will have to remove that. There's no uh, traditional Busby lock, which normally looks like a little box. That is the only lock. It prevents the trigger from being pulled back with the priming rod in the rear position. So remove this and you have complete manual control over depriming. But you're gonna have to gut the air restrictors and I would actually epoxy up this thing to not rotate. And that's why, that's why my personal metal part here is going to go in place. It remains in the down position. I have actually already drilled out two holes for screws to go in place to anchor it to the priming bar. And it replaces this whole mechanism. So now with this installed, the plunger tube will not rotate. But every single time that you pump the pump grip, it will advance the mechanism. So very easy. I'm going to share that now because this is in an internals guide, but I'm also showing mod potential in each of these videos. So very simple internals, large plunger tube that I, unfortunately the only drawback to it is a lot of dead space from the front of the plunger tube to actually firing and you're gonna have to gut everything there and then somebody is going to copy this and somebody could come to their own original uh design ahead you know if they have enough time with this themselves but mine is one eighth inch piece of steel and it will fit in place and this has no flex once it's installed with two i'm going to do the uh shoulder type metal screws that have large washer style heads they're going to lock it into place on the priming bar and that will allow the belt or chain to be advanced on every pump instead of on every fourth one so for me easy to mod i put this on my discord and i even told my patrons this this thing is going to be ultra ultra easy to modify it just requires this is the key it requires this to be replaced and then the plunger tube will not rotate nor Will you end up having this weird thing where you have to pump, 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 and then finally fire? Because that's without without doing something about the advancement of this, that's what you'd have to do. See, because again, I'm going to uh, put this back down as if I just pumped it to there. That piece forces that down and catches the belt or chain advancement and rotates it. So if you're able to do that every time, if you're able to do that every single time, well, it would rotate after every single time you fire. Very easy. So secret's out now. Easy to shotgun. And the faux barrel is so large in diameter that, I mean, that is huge. The question was posed uh, by Ryan Inglestad on my video where I reviewed the Tetra shot could four darts fit down the barrel? Four darts down the barrel. Now, of course, that's uh, <laughs> just me tossing them down, but the 
diameter of the four darts, if they're blasting out, is much smaller than the inner diameter of this barrel. So, Ryan Ingolstead posed the question, and there is hopefully a good enough solid answer that, yes, four darts can travel down there. Time will tell with actual function of running around, running and gunning, will it cause an issue, you know, if you move the blaster, you know, if you're moving it after they've been fired, possibly. A uh, solution to that would be to eliminate the faux barrel and put something cartoonishly big, maybe. I mean, that already is, but I do think there is some mod potential. I'm going to use a upgraded seven or eight kilogram uh, retaliator spring, and then we're going to throw this together. And my very next video coming up here immediately following this one will be shotgun mod. So we'll get to that. I hope that this though is informative and helpful. It's simple to see. It's got a very simple catch mechanism in the back. I mean, very simple. Just like most Busby things, simplicity is the name of the game for them. And if they can find a simpler way to do something, they do. But I'm going to give a close passover of all the internals here. And uh, by the way, unless painting, there is no reason to ever disassemble the rotational mechanism for the chain. Unless you're going to paint it, you know, paint and you don't want to get any paint on that feed wheels. Unless you're doing that, there's no reason. It, you can remove the plunger tube as you've seen. It's completely up to you. You don't even need to remove the plunger uh, or the priming bar. The uh, grip actually does just push right off the front of this. So completely up to you whether you remove this or not. No need to to actually modify the internals. But I'll leave a still image of this at the end of the video also for easy reference. But that's why I'm doing this it's mostly as a uh, community resource. But I do hope you enjoy this and I thank you for watching.